Amen. It's so much different to speak from here. But new level. Amen. I was about to say new devils, but no. New levels are new blessings. Amen. Amen. It's been a joy to see everyone here and to see everyone at the conference and leaders and friends and people that are an inspiration to us and people that are a blessing to us. And so we are really, really happy for what God is doing. It's also been a great opportunity to be able to hear people's testimonies actually at this conference already hopefully toward the end of the service we're going to be able to hear some here and I know that even last night when we prayed the Holy Spirit moved and God touched people and God is going to touch people tonight also amen those of you who are coming who are sick let's believe that when you walk out of this place you are going to be healed in Jesus mighty name amen also those those of us in here today who maybe uh, you have a ministry and you don't see people coming to Jesus Christ I'm literally believing deeply in my soul when we were praying our pastor was leading the prayer that after this conference that God is going to begin to do something fresh in your heart and in your ministry that you will begin to see people saved regularly on your youth services in Jesus mighty name can somebody say amen and we will populate heaven and we will plunder hell in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And so I know what it's like to sit in the ministry where people are being saved by hundreds. And it's not necessarily, sometimes people come up and they say, you know, lay hands on me. And it's not necessarily that. It's that sometimes you sit in the atmosphere and you see things and something goes into your subconscious. And this, this vision that this passion is spurs up in your heart. And then you walk out of that and it changes you slowly but surely for the glory of God. Can somebody say amen. The most important part is that when we have a spark to constantly protect that spark feed that spark and one day that small vision that we have that we protect becomes the vision that begins to protect and feed us can somebody say amen without further ado let's open our bibles to genesis chapter 5 verse 9 and mm -hmm. i don't think that's the scripture that even though I have it on my notes it's about Noah uh, so uh, give me Hebrews 11 chapter 1 please Hebrews 11 chapter 1 says now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and in Genesis it talks about a man named Noah who was righteous before God and he lived in a very difficult world people were killing one another people were hurting one another there was abuse there was a lot of very bad things happening in his world and God comes to him and says uh, that I'm about to create a brand new world and I want you to be in that world the only way you're gonna get into that world is I want you to begin to build a boat right now and that's the only way you're gonna make it to that world if you don't build, build a boat, when the world comes, you won't be able to reach into that world without building this boat, without building this ark. And Noah begins to build the ark. The only problem was that there has never been a flood before. There has never been rain in such a magnitude that requires a boat or requires a ship. So Noah is building something that doesn't exist. Noah is building something that has never existed and Noah is building something for a new world. For years he's building this ship because he's going to be in a new world. And of course people probably made fun of him. People probably didn't understand him. Maybe even Noah himself doubted himself. Yet when the time came this boat he built ushered him into a brand new life. I believe every person here wants to go into a new chapter of their life well I'm gonna raise both of my hands you may be like Noah your life might be wonderful you might be serving God but I want to let you know on the basis of the promises of God that God has a new world a new chapter for your life you may be today experiencing a blessing from God and your world might not be filled with violence and things but God has another level for your life. You may be seeing people getting saved in your church by 20s, 30s, 50s and 70s but God still has a new world for you even for you. You might be sick in your body today and you either recover from one stomach flu, you get another disease and you're like literally like a duct tape for disease. Everywhere you roll disease attaches to you. God has a new chapter for your life. You might be constantly attacked by certain demons in your life. It's like you finally got rid of fear, depression came in. 
you beat the depression now some other attraction or some other thing that begins to come in and you find yourself constantly surrounded in the old world God has a new world for you the only thing we must understand is the new world that God has for us it cannot be entered supernaturally by rapture it can only be entered by a ship called vision by a ship called faith where God plants a promise inside of us and this promise begins to build a reality of what's not yet seen and that begins to slowly usher us into a new world that God has promised for us can somebody say amen I've seen this firsthand as growing up as a young teenager in the United States. I've seen this as my pastor. He always believed for the new level and he had a very radical approach for this new level. For example, when our church started and we only had just three working families that just got off of the welfare. Some of you don't know what the welfare is. It's, it's what you get when you come to the United States and you don't speak English. For about three months and then after that you get forced to look for a job and so in the moment we were a young family's church just started and our pastor says we will see Americans come to Jesus Christ yes we will see Hispanics we will see everyone from our community come to Jesus Christ and here is this like three small little families with these little minions 15 years of age and we're gonna see people come to Jesus Christ and we all love the idea I mean come on who doesn't like motivation until the pastor says well with our three families without the church being registered without our pastor receiving an American license for being a pastor and without any funds we need to get a building well that now that is crazy now that is insane why do you need a boat if there is no flood and pastor was convinced inside the rain is coming and we all love the idea that the rain is coming until the pastor says well now we have to build a building we have to have a building three families no budget no money and there is no future no prospects for years but my pastor he was a man of vision he never stayed with the reality he was never in love with the reality he was always in love with the future and with the promise people didn't understand him people made fun of him and some people were scared of him it's amazing to go to a church where you're not challenged but when you go to a church and there is three four people you get this amazing vision and you have to build a church now you know whose money it has to pay for and so all the three wonderful families you know we started to say this is insane and the pastor started to look for a church this was actually serious within about six to eight months of our existence our church was looking for a building some churches exist for 20 years they have 300 members and they don't have a building we existed for six to eight months and we're looking for a building and our pastor found a building across Pasco High, went to get a financing. The Assemblies of God says, well, we have our own building that's staying vacant. We will help you with all the financing and everything. Just go in there and we will uh, help you with all of this stuff. The problem is we didn't have the money and we didn't have anything. We got this building. We, we were doing services in this exact building at that time. And we had a certain amount of time to raise up funds so we can purchase this building. And we start proclaiming and declaring this is our building and God is going to provide the funds. Well there was no way to provide the funds but God provided a way. And the interesting part is that the school found a place to rent here, signed a contract. That contract was used as a down payment and from this day on they gave us the facility and we're the owners of this facility. The interesting part is this. All of that happened for one reason. Because first there was a vision that caused a man to build a ship and then God brought the rain most of us say this to God bring the rain and the ship and bring me into the new chapter of my life God bless me heal me change my mind make me brand new and I will be a happy person God is promising the blessing God is promising the healing God is promising the new chapter the new place in our life but what he does with that promise is he wants that promise to find a place inside of you and inside of me to build a boat inside of us and with that boat God begins to use that to take us into another level the same way Satan works Satan uses our situation to build within us a barrier to build within us a mindset to build within us a stronghold 
He uses our surroundings. He uses our feelings. He uses our circumstances. He uses our disease, the symptoms to build within us a stronghold through which he can control and paralyze and keep a plateau in our future. You know, they actually did a study on the fish, barracuda fish, where they put a barracuda fish into an aquarium and they put a glass in the middle of the aquarium and they put another fish on the other side of the aquarium and you know barracuda fish they don't like other fish they just eat other fish and the barracuda fish you know was swimming to the other side of the aquarium to to eat the other fish and it hit the glass learned the lesson the next day the fish was so close the barracuda swim again hit the glass again and it kept hitting the glass until it realized I think I need to learn the lesson and it learned the lesson don't swim to the other side even though the barracuda fish didn't see the glass but she learned the lesson and this glass that was put inside of the aquarium went inside of the mind of the barracuda fish and they did a study they removed the glass and they were surprised to find out that the fish never again went to the other side of the aquarium even though the glass didn't exist and this is what they said the glass that stayed in the aquarium immigrated into the mind of the fish I wondered how many times circumstances that stay in our life for some time very soon the devil uses those circumstances and he makes an immigration of those circumstances straight into the barrier of our mind that even if God wants to change things those things are still in our mind but I believe that today is the day that God is going to deliver some strongholds and is going to break certain glasses in our minds and take us to another level can somebody say amen amen satan uses our situation by which he wants to program and build inside of us a new mindset most people think that the devil comes only to kill it is true he also comes to build he takes a person's addiction he takes person's disease he takes person's constant failure and constant mistakes and he builds within him a mindset and he builds within him a certain bend and that becomes the barrier through which he controls eventually their life and then when God begins to give them a promise there's something stands here that says that's not for you God is not going to do that because you've tried before and you failed and that plateau is the life you're supposed to live God cannot take us to another level without the vehicle of a boat without the vehicle of our visions and our visions today have to be higher than our reality your mind cannot be under your reality it cannot be on the same level of your reality it always has to be higher than your reality you can't be building a tent or a hut you gotta be building a boat if it's not raining many people today when it's not raining they're building houses in their minds means this is how much money I'm making this is who I am this is how many people are coming to church this is what kind of pastor I am this is the kind of things that are happening in my body well this is how healthy I am and we're building our mind based on what's happening around us but a man of vision a man of faith builds a boat he's always higher in his faith than his reality the moment he catches up with his reality is that moment the devil has him trapped on that level for the rest of his life and we may say well devil had nothing to do with it it's just part of life no see in one man's life went from 3,000 people like Dr. Young Cho into 5,000 people from 5,000 people and he went into 10,000 100,000 300,000 half a million and to a million souls but sometimes we see we reach certain level of success and our visions stop and they get accustomed to that level that we are in and that's exactly where the enemy keeps it inside of us and God wants to break that in our minds today can somebody say amen, amen. do you agree with me amen. are you gonna go to another level amen. are you gonna go to a new chapter in your life in your health in your emotions in your family in your finances in Jesus name can I hear your amen? amen hallelujah put your hands together for Jesus Christ you know and this this hits home personally for me because for a very long time in our ministry we had some 60 people in our service on our Wednesday night and 
for for quite some time the salvations were not only irregular they were they, they, they were almost non-existent and so and to see that after a while when you keep kind of trying to press in you're trying to go for it that slowly creeps into your mind and it becomes the mindset that you begin to develop some of you remember from our older videos that all of the sermons that were spoken at hungry generation were always spoken with the podium being right here because for the past some 10 years actually all of our um, services all of our services were done on Wednesday night like this where we would pack only try to focus on this side because first of all there was not enough people to even pack this side so maybe four or five rows would come and we would set the pulpit right here and that was kind of the deal Wednesday night is a small little flock gathering together to worship Jesus and pursue Jesus on this side but this wasn't the problem with people the problem also was developed inside of our mind and inside of our spirit when at the particular time I remember one a year and a half ago about two years ago when our pastor started to encourage us to go after souls and to go after that and we started to pray and pray and pray and pray for souls but we just didn't see much we still didn't see salvations and then we would see like one person get saved a month later another person gets saved and so things started to slowly pick up we kind of got so excited and so pumped I remember it was actually after the your guys' camp on uh, during summer Sunday morning we were here praying and I remember I told our leadership team I was like guys I think that I have a problem in my head and I think you all adopted the problem with me I said on Wednesday we have to ch change the pulpit and put it right in the middle and we have to literally stretch our mind and no longer as we always did for 10 years to treat that this is our side and to simply give God space to fill the whole place completely and I said in our mind we have to stretch right now and they're like well what if like we'll have just one row filled I'm like I don't care we'll just do it anyway and the first Wednesday we changed the pulpit right here and yes you're right there was only two pews that was filled on both sides it was intimidating but it's interesting that within within about four to five months people started to come more salvations became consistent they became every single service or every other service and within about eight months the barrier we had in our ministry of 60 people every Wednesday for 10 years was once for all broken where now we have a different barrier it's 120 what is almost every Wednesday the lowest attendance is 120 125 and everything when it hits under 120 we're like all depressed and when I go and declare fast and everything and stuff and so and I look back in our ministry and I'm like that was not just with the church that was right here also the whole 60 it wasn't here it wasn't the people were not coming it was the fact that this little guy was trapped with that reality because he tried to break through and after a while he realized well this is my destiny when in reality God had another chapter and God has another chapter for you also maybe for you the barrier today is in your finances maybe the barrier is in your sickness you accepted it as a reality you said well this is how it was I tried to change it and this is how it's gonna be I gotta tell you something something has changed God remove the glass and you will go to another chapter of your life somebody say amen God removes the glass by speaking his word God removes the glass when the Holy Spirit touches you something shifts inside and you know at that moment something happened nothing might happen on the outside but the Word of God got planted inside you might say well this is the Word of God you know that's that's not enough and my faith is not enough I need to see the change we must understand that faith is another sense and that sense is as verifiable as every other sense you have in your body for example we have five senses in our body through which we perceive something to be real your eyes tell you what you see your smell tells you what you smell now for example if I spray perfume right now around you you won't see perfume but your smell one sense out of five will send you a signal saying there is something in the air and it smells good your eyes will say I can't see it your smell says shut up you're not supposed to see everything 
we can trust you only with everything God also gave me a portion to control and if I can smell it you don't have to see it see and then there comes another sense but many times God added sixth sense and the sixth sense is faith and many times we butcher faith bully faith because the eye said I can't see it the smell says I can't smell it the hands say I can't touch it and handle it and faith has become ridiculed faith is for the foolish for the fanatics and for the ignorant really why do you don't treat your smell like that why is the faith is trampled under the feet of five senses when God raised the faith to be on the same level as all the rest of five senses we have to give faith the same honor you give to smell when faith says it's gonna happen the smell has to sit down and learn when faith says God is gonna heal your body the eyes have to shut up and pay attention when faith says God is gonna bless you and prosper you the ears have to close up and say we trust you the way you trust us when somebody says something see I speak words you can't see my words but you're trusting one sense in your body it's your ears only one the rest of the senses right now are silent the information that is coming into your mind is coming only through one sense and this sense is exalted above all other senses and the rest of the senses are bowing and saying yes yes whatever you say because God didn't put all of the authority in one sense the eyes that's one of the reasons why our faith has to be developed this sixth sense if God has said in your spirit if God has said in his promise listen the eyes the ears the smell the touch and everything take a seat relax that is outside of your pay grade so shut up and pay attention to what the sixth sense the faith says can somebody say amen come on let's put our hands together for Jesus and when we begin to exercise that God begins to move mightily in our lives a few months ago there was a me and my wife we decided to give our vehicle away to one couple in our church it was a nice vehicle we gave the first one that was okay to give away didn't hurt a lot the second one was painful but we decided to give away on Saturday and um, we decided not to take too much time to pray about it because we knew we could talk ourselves out of it and so next Sunday we met with this wonderful couple and we decided to just hand them over the, the car and give it away to them I'm a man of excellence and uh, principle because the bumper was stretched scratched and there was a few other things I decided to wait a little bit before I actually give the car so that I could fix the bumper I'll rather drive with a beaten up bumper but if you give somebody you got to give somebody nice right and so I was like I'm gonna fix that up and then give it to them on Sunday we meet with them and I was like guys and this is a wonderful couple who comes to our church and they had a car accident previously so they didn't have a good vehicle it was just one vehicle that was kind of a work vehicle we tell them um, we want to give you the car they were previously shopping for a vehicle so to them it came as a, such a good news and uh, they got so happy the guys like no you don't have to do this I'm like no we're, we're gonna do this the wife starts crying and you could see right away a change in the room they stopped looking for a vehicle they stopped shopping for a vehicle things have changed their mood changed everything changed the interesting part is they did not leave my house with the car they still sat in their car that was uh, a bit crappy without the vehicle that they received in promise only a month later they actually received the keys but inside they became owners of that vehicle not when I when they got the keys when they got the promise Can somebody say amen it changed their mood it changed their thoughts they called their parents and said we already have a car it changed their confession 
they were already walking as owners of that vehicle and that vehicle was not in their possession yet but it was already inside that's what faith is faith is not when you're walking depressed discouraged faith is when you're walking as though you're the owner of that thing you're still waiting for the keys off faith is not when you get the keys faith is when you get the promise and can I encourage you with something God will never promise you something two things about promise first that he cannot deliver and secondly that he does not want to deliver I couldn't promise my friend something I didn't have and secondly I couldn't promise my friend something I didn't want to give I had a guy who was uh, putting curbing in my house and uh, he ran over my sprinklers broke five of my sprinklers he's like I'm gonna come tomorrow and fix all of them he gave me a promise is he capable of keeping the promise oh yes did he want to keep that promise no and I was a fool to believe his promise because the next day he sends me a text message and says you fix them yourself I'm not coming God is not a man he will only make promises he has resources to keep and God only makes promises he has a motive to keep and if he makes a promise it becomes a reality inside you become the owner of that promise and then comes the keys now the frustration we have is this why doesn't God give me the keys right away well for I mean, there's few reasons one of them is sometimes God needs to fix the bumper the bumper I don't mean on your blessing sometimes it's on your head sometimes the bumper is in, in our own heart that God needs to fix sometimes there's certain things that God still needs to prepare and sometimes God wants to give us a little bit of time to see do you really want that how horrible would that be if everything you believed for everything you feared became a reality the next second most of us would have been in accidents dead by cancer or dead by other things God gives us a little space to see make sure we like what's coming into our garage and so that in case we don't like it that we can change it by aborting bad dreams and accepting good ones can somebody say amen that's how God works through faith in our lives that's how God works through faith in and through our lives and the Holy Spirit wants to do that in this meeting tonight the Holy Spirit wants to change you on the inside by giving you his promise the Holy Spirit wants you to open up your heart and accept the fact that when he gives you inside of your heart a promise when you receive that promise that promise creates a new reality it creates an arc inside of you and that arc ushers you into a new chapter of your life that arc ushers you into a new season of your life that arc begins to change your circumstances it is so beautiful to live a life of not being a prisoner to your circumstances it is so beautiful to live a life not being chained to the things that you see around but in every situation to always be one step higher in your spirit when God begins to give you this you go up a little bit higher and you're always building for the future instead of settling for the present and somebody say amen that is the plan and the will that God has for each one of us when our pastor started the church and we got this building what he started to do right away he had this mindset and it right away started to spill on us I was in high school and he said we will put Vlad and Ilya on the staff in the church now you must understand typically people put people on the staff in the church if the church has grown if everybody in the board has decided after the years of planning and decision and fighting and arguing that they will put somebody in the staff and then they will decide the salary because there's a lot of work in the church our church had no work there was nothing to do because when I asked my pastor what do I do on the staff he says figure it out 
He's, and this is what exactly what he told me. He says, I'm not putting you on a staff because there is work. I'm putting you on a staff so you will find work. Completely opposite mindset. Because our pastor was always higher in his visions than the reality. And that's why we stood that you, sometimes it wasn't easy to come to church. Out of high school, I would come and I'd say, what do I do in church? How is the staff run? Do I cut the grass? Do I do this? Do I do that? And so, and I would ask the pastor. Pastor would say, well, you figure it out. You're the one on the staff. And with time, we found work. We found more laborers. We found other things. But I'm so glad that pastor did not follow a traditional, logical way of building a church. Because God is not a God of logic. He's the God of faith. He tells Noah, build an ark. And God will always do that with you. He will challenge you to take a step of faith. He will challenge you to confess and stand and believe. He will create a reality because he is just like my pastor. He's the God of faith. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. <laughs> hallelujah. 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 I remember when about two years ago around this time that we were start seeing a more of pressing in into the seeing soul saved and in my mind I didn't realize that my mind was fully occupied with the idea that God is not going to use me to pray for the sick and it came as a result there was a reasons for that because I prayed for other people and I think I could count more people on my hands who died than actually who got healed for the past 10 years there's maybe like two or three cases that I could remember that when I prayed for somebody that actually there was any improvement or any change and when this mindset this thing inside Satan builds using your situations using your failures it's not easy to break it you can't come to anointed man of God and says anoint me with oil that all of that gets broken that's like coming after building this building for 20 years and coming to a bulldozer and say hey can you destroy all of this building in two seconds that's not how it's done it has to be removed layer by layer. So about two years ago when I started to kind of work with my mind and understand that one of the reasons people don't get healed in our ministry is not because God does not want to heal. It's because I also allowed a blockage inside of me. I've built a ship that's not taking me to a new chapter but it's keeping me in the same chapter where the same things have been happening. And I have to wood by wood, piece by piece, got to remove that. Promise by promise and I have to accept the reality that this is not true and I remember also there was an anointed man of God who prayed for me and he spoke over me he says that God is going to use you to heal the sick I had my phone on secretly and I was recording that the reason why is because I knew what's going to follow that is I'm going to take this promise this word from God and his confirmation to practice and so I kept that prayer every time I would travel somewhere and go speak. I didn't want to do this in our church because all the sick people we had in our church, we prayed for them a million times and I didn't believe God can heal them. So, but I can believe for other people because I don't know them. And so I was like, I can believe for other people. So I would go and preach in other places. This would happen regularly. Before the service, I will open up that cell phone. It's a one minute prayer. I would play, play that. And I would just encourage myself, everything is going to be fine. You go for it, you pray. And I would pray for the sick and never ask for testimonies because I was convinced there was none and then I started to pray same thing in our services pastor says every service you have to we have to as a team pray for the sick we would pray for the sick month after month month after month right here from the stage but there was no response until one time and actually this gentleman you were there at the GC conference uh, Jesus uh, what was the church called JC church healing a uh, healing house church in Seattle um, I was invited there uh, there was a youth conference there it was a, it was a small uh, upstairs in some kind of like a storage uh, a, a place and so there was not a not a big thing few people came there and just like a tradition already I prayed for the sick I had to leave didn't ask for any testimonies a month later a couple comes from that church from that city to bring their son for deliverance or some other thing and the father shares a story he says we were there at this conference and my wife was through an accident and there was something really bad with her shoulder she was scheduled for some uh, doctor's appointments and other things we were there and when you offered a prayer for the sick that she felt a heat and sensation now I've heard of healing testimonies like from mighty men of God and I heard a lot of people say things like they felt heat so when this guy is telling me that she felt heat and sensation my jaw drops open 
and I was like tell me more and he begins to say and well after that she stretched her shoulder I was like well I didn't ask people to stretch their shoulders afterwards he said she stretched her shoulder and she realized there was no pain and I said and what happened next she cancels the doctor's appointments but then she goes to another doctor he examines her back and do some x-ray and they say that her shoulder is like brand new and I was like you gotta be kidding me I'm like that's amazing here he is encouraging me with this testimony I said to my wife I was like you gotta go find that lady and bring her in front of our church and interview her she interviewed her and something happened when that happened a mindset that I was working on I had one more thing left that it was cracked that God can use a person like me to heal the sick God can use a person like me to bring people to salvation something that I've built for so long and when that was cracked open the interesting part is after that every single trip where I would go because that night on Sunday we went to Portland with our youth eight people got up and testified of healing from that day it's been a year every single time I go outside of our church there's always someone if not publicly eventually comes up and says I've been healed of that I've been healed of that and I've been healed of that God wants to destroy the strongholds can somebody say amen God wants to destroy the strongholds maybe in your mind today is not that God can use you maybe in your mind you've built God can't heal me well prophet to Joshua prayed for me pastor Benihan prayed for me well everyone prayed for me they anointed me with oil and you already have built a window inside of your mind saying God will not heal me even when prayer for healing is offered after prayer you go like this I knew it change your I knew it build an ark of the promise of God let your vision be higher than your failures and your experiences you will be surprised with where that boat can take you a brand new world a brand new chapter something you may have never seen before will be opened before you and then God will take you higher and higher as you let him take you higher and higher in your faith and in your visions can somebody say amen